Caddis Maximus here. Here's a short video on how to rebuild a Jacobs Industrial three jaw drill chuck. There's a couple of good videos on YouTube about this, and I figured I'd just do a short one myself that was uh, kind of simple and to the point. This only applies to not just Jacobs brands, but only like professional grade chucks where it's obvious that it is just a solid uh, steel collar that has been press fit over the body of the chuck. There are many chucks that, uh, as well as keyless hand tightening chucks most of those are assembled in special ways and this won't apply to it won't apply to what are seemingly nice steel chucks but are actually a telltale sign you can see that there's a lip here and then this collar is actually a stamp piece of sheet metal that's been pressed over an actual billet gear and there's a little snap ring so this only applies to these industrial chucks i should say are the real professional grade ones there's only seven parts inside one of these this was one that has a very rare issue where it was just over tightened repeatedly enough and um maybe just a little bit of manufacturing oversizing where when you tighten it it was actually slipping and there is a way to fix to try to repair that and it's using lock type but i figured i'd use this opportunity on these industrial chucks and some of the videos they say to open them all the way up you want to open them up just enough to get the teeth retracted below the surface of the chuck but you don't want them all the way back because they do extend into this collar and the undercut just a little bit. So you want to have a little bit of space there. Also, due to the nature of these in the wide surface area, even though this is a press fit, this isn't a super duty press fit like a suspension bushing on a car or a truck. This is something where if you had a socket that was just big enough, maybe one and five eighths that was just on this lip, you could just use a piece of wood and hit it with a hammer to uh, get it apart. You can also use a gear puller, and technically you can rebuild one of these while it's on a drill if you had enough space to be able to get the, to the back of this to pull it off the front. Since this one's slipping, it's actually really easy. Let me demonstrate here. As you can see, I was literally, because this one was already slipping, able just to use a piece of wood to hammer on it while holding on to it to actually get the collar to slide off. And the whole reason Jacobs invented the three-jaw chuck is because the other style of chucks would always get really tight, and then he would bust, he busts his knuckles. The story is literally he got tired of busting his knuckles on other types of chucks, so he invented the Jacobs chuck. So you can see that undercut there in this collar. And that's why you need the teeth raised just a little bit so it can fit. And then this shiny part here is the actual part that presses over the half nuts. They're half nuts because in order to get it assembled, this body is just one machine piece of steel with a bunch of holes and geometry. One of the reasons these were so expensive. And this is actually a split nut. So you want to maintain the orientation, although it's pretty easy because it is tapered threads in there. Another thing to also note is we can see that this is a fractured nut, so it fits really precisely. They machine it out, and then they put a couple notches in, harden it, and then break it. And actually, modern automobile uh, connecting rods for the pistons are like that, too, because it maintains a very precise alignment. Now, generally speaking, at this point, you might want to do something like put a different color Sharpie marks or a couple little scribe and a couple little scratches to keep track of the order of the little jaws. But if you do put them in wrong, all you'll do is you'll put on the half nuts and then you'll see if the teeth are not even and then you'll just have to transverse the teeth a couple times in order to get it uh, all even. I mean, at this point, all you have to do is just use your finger. Sometimes these get really stuck and so you might have to hammer through there, but then you can just pull out these teeth. And the beauty is, is that they have a real precise hole that's drilled and then these very special teeth that ride up and down those ramps. And that's why the, the face is like that. And this is the riding angle. But if you take it apart, it's not totally critical that the teeth end up in the same bore that they came out of. Usually you want to keep it that way, but it's not critical. The only thing that's obviously critical is if they're out of order, then they won't be uh, expanding and they won't go in and out evenly. And in this case, it's just pretty easy to pull them out. They used to sell rebuild kits for these Jacobs Chucks. And they probably still do for their more professional grade ones. And just to finish this, the real magic once again is in these teeth. Because if we look real closely here, 
at these teeth, we can see how the threads have been cut at different offsets on them. And this is a easy way, although the bottom tooth got a little chipped, is to line them up is you'll have one that has a really thin tooth, one that has a kind of a normal tooth, and then one the tooth is this offset a little higher, and so you like small, medium, and large. And you just line them up like that, and that's how you know you have them in the proper order. If you install them in the truck like this, then what you would have is like this tooth would be a little bit taller than the other two. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. Just wanted to do a quick little video about how to disassemble one of these Jacobs trucks. And I forgot the last tip. So what you would do is you need to clean this all up super perfectly clean with alcohol and brake cleaner and all that. Um, once you get these, uh, then you would reassemble it all and you would actually put some Loctite right around the outer edge of this half nuts here and into these grooves. Once it's together, then you'd press this steel collar on and let it sit up for one to two days and that Loctite may provide enough extra friction to at least fix the problem with this truck is where the collar was slipping. But it's a super rare issue, I've almost never seen that. Anyway, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.